here to do a little update. I'm gonna go into a really good how to on everything I've done. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little sneak peek for the final product. So this is kind of what I was getting at with the closet aspect. We have a spot where I can do all my shirts and then winter wear and then all the cubbies will be pants, socks, uh, underwear and then other storage. So this is kind of what I was getting at. I have pretty nice little wood inlay, kind of some extra flavor, I guess is what I like to call it. I'm going to leave it natural color and then the doors will go on front of it. So this whole process that I did, um, my wife was pregnant during the time. So normally she helps me out with a lot of the big lifting and moving things in the room. What I would suggest is when I go through my process and how I did this, this really does kind of expose that if you're by yourself, this is a completely you know, functional thing to do. You just need to piece it out one board at a time. So before I kind of get into it, let's party hardy. Okay, before we party and do all the cool how-to stuff, let's talk about the thought process in designing something like this. So our master bedroom wall is a really good size wall. So most people, what they would do is they'd put like a little dresser and then put your TV or mount your TV on the wall, which is all good, but then you waste nearly like four foot on this side and then four foot on that side. So what I wanted to do is really capture this entire space and then this is really dirty, but let me see. My bed right here, that's my footboard. I'm, I'm not done building it quite, but it's gonna be a bench when I'm all done. And that bench is gonna hide my subwoofer. It'll also be storage for shoes and just a place to sit down and play Xbox. But I made sure that I left myself a really adequate amount of walking space right here. So putting the built in here, I really don't lose any square footage of my room, I just gain storage so to explain too we have nice french doors and i wanted to make sure that i didn't lose any of that i wanted to get as close to the door without sacrificing any built-in room so i measured first the gap that i would need for my door and i knew okay from here this is the max length i would want to go on my wall so then if you see we go all the way down here then I have this little indented cutout and I have my bay windows. So I just knew, okay, I'm gonna be extended from the wall um, a certain amount of distance just to fit my shirts. Then I just was kind of be creative with, okay, how could I accent this? I just wanted to come straight, make this 90 to my bay window. So that's that. And then I had tray ceiling. So I decided the best to do is let's not go all the way up to the tray and I'll put some LED lighting on the top of that so it'll have a nice little glow. So that's what I'm gonna do for finishing, but I have a sweet storage spot. All these little storage nooks, like this one will be a fireproof safe. I might have some, some gems I don't want my little boy getting into. Then like the things you don't think about, like suitcases, big bulky things you don't need to get to, but every now and then, you know, you can easily access it. And then just open shelving on the end for pictures and whatnot. So knowing the idea of space kind of dictates what you can do with your built-in. I know that I'm a very, like, uh, I don't know if I want to use the word OCD or not, but things need to be center. So when I first designed this, I need to make sure, okay, to my tray ceiling, what's center? That's going to be my TV. And as you notice, that I've allowed for some TV growth space. That's very important. So, you know what I'm saying? This could be bigger eventually. So, this is, this is something that's kind of an afterthought me and my wife did. So you might see me do this in the final video, so it's kind of like a little um, a maybe thing, but I might come back and cut this off remove this whole panel here we might do an electric fireplace insert 
and then have maybe just a little storage on the sides. So that's a realistic potential, but right now what I was planning on doing is just having pull-out drawers. But that's that. The other thing is what is what is your comfort level on the electricity aspect? Are you comfortable with moving outlets or are you not? For me, I can, but I didn't want to. So let me see if I can get a good example. So stuff like this, like my outlets, and I have a bunch of pictures here, but I don't know if you guys can see it. I have a power outlet right there. Then I have, where's the other one? There's another power outlet down there. I just had to make sure that my my vertical boards, I was within one side or the other side of the outlet. So you have to think about that stuff too if you don't want to move it. Now if you want to move it, obviously it doesn't matter. You'll just adjust to the unit itself. So, but I would say step one would be find your max length that you can go that's still functional and then find your center point and then build everything off of the biggest cubby necessary. Then once you have that, then you just have, basically it's just from here to here and then the other side. So for me, I just divided it out. I wanted, I kind of figured out what adequate space would be for doors, take the distance from here to here and then uh, just divided it by two. And then this one was kind of the same concept. So it is what it is what it is. So from here on, I guess you can kind of see a lot of my style of building is using, um, I don't know if you, what the proper term is, I call them cleats or anchors, but I'll come in and just put a piece of wood where I know my line's gonna be, I'll tack that in with brad nails, and then I'll rest my board on top and then use this as a pivot point, and I'll use a level, and I'll just tack this other side in. It's a really easy way to do this by yourself without having to balance and be super strategic on how you lay things out. But we're gonna jump to the computer. I'm gonna show you my SketchUp version. I sound like I'm out of breath. It's because I was climbing on my built-in. That's childish. So let's get inside the computer. All right, welcome guys. This is the 3D model here. We are in SketchUp. This is kind of my preferred software I like to use. So just a real quick demonstration um, for any of you guys who are interested in learning this software. There's a lot of different good ways to do what I'm about to do. And if you look down the line, I've copy and pasted this one unit I've made. And each time I copy and paste it, I remove one item. And then that's how I'm gonna illustrate the stages. Um, you could also use layers and you can go through basically every layer into one model. The only problem is when you're doing anything more than like a dozen different variations it gets really complex and you could really uh, shoot yourself in the foot so to speak by editing something in the wrong layer so this is just kind of my little method it's really quick and easy and I could just kind of label each of these tabs to what I'm trying to illustrate here so we'll go ahead and we'll jump to the, the back because this is going to be the very beginning so first we're going to talk about foundation so you see here, this is the two by four structure that I started off with, and it's in three sections. And that's just simply the little end section, which is where I have the shelving, and there's two other sections. And how I came about these two sections, it's just basically the distance from here and the distance from there divided by two. That's all it was, just to keep it really simple. And then, as you see, I just laid these out and screwed them together. What I had done is I pocket hold my two by fours, um, you could simply just nail them or do a countersunk screw here. So nothing really crazy about this. Um, I did, so kind of talk about different situations in case, you know, I have mine on top of carpet, but let's talk about in case you had yours on, say wood floor or tile, say one of your concerns would be long-term you decide you don't want your built-in anymore or you change your flooring, what do you do? So 
in my situation, it's really easy. I would just peel back that last layer of ba uh, baseboard and I could just take a razor blade and then just cut this carpet right away and then install the new flooring and then reinstall the new baseboard over it. Really simple. It would be the same concept if you had wood floor, you'd just pop, take like a little saw and cut it or, you know, those tile, you just chisel it off. So it's really no big deal. However you want to do it, I just left it on top. And because my carpet is on top of concrete slab, it's a really good foundation. And then also another good note, as I didn't draw this on SketchUp, but there's a gap you see from the wall. And that's just to illustrate the baseboard. So what I did is I didn't want to remove anything. I wanted this to be very simple, easy installation. So I just butted this up against my baseboard. So if you're going to do that strategy, you just have to, you know, compensate that thickness of your baseboard and make your two by four structure that much shorter. So that way you really, everything you're doing is measuring from the wall out. And that'll make better sense when we go to the next phase. And that next phase is the particle board. This is like the substructure. So this is just half inch particle board, really cheap. Um, it's effective. And this just lays across the whole two by four. And what I've done is I just use glue and then brad nails. So I take this up, put a nice bead of glue, push this back down, brad nail it. And then another good idea is see how this piece of wood kind of hides those, those cross beams. What you do like with like a Sharpie or something, is out on this face of the two by four, put a Sharpie line right in the middle, right in the middle here, put a Sharpie line. So that way when your, your, your sheet of wood is down, you know exactly where to land your brad nails just to help you out. And then that's, that one's pretty easy. So that's all I did there. Uh, the next phase would be constructing my base cabinets. Now these are the only things I built in my garage and I just moved them inside the bedroom pre-assembled. So here's another illustration. There's a lot of different ways you could do boxes. Um, one way is just do pocket holes to make the two pieces of wood, or you could do countersunk screws, or you could even do like a rabbit to where this side fits inside this piece of wood. It's recessed in. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, I went with the quick way. So I think mine, I did a combination of pocket hole and then countersunk. So, and you don't have to worry about pocket hole on this because I'm gonna do a big drawer box on the inside. So you'll never even see what happens here. This is just the structure. So that's that. And I, uh, this one I did three quarter particle board. This like the industrial strength particle board. Um, I really love it. It's really light, it's, it's heavy duty, but it's a light enough to where when you're moving along the table saw, it's not like a three quarter MDF, which is very heavy and very dense. So I, I like this a lot. And then I don't worry about the interior because I paint it and I put really nice face frames on my stuff. So that's why I kind of add the, the classy detail. So we'll go back down here and you can see I have all three pieces together and simply put, um, the rhyme and reason to the three boxes is my TV, we identified as the centerpiece. So that's this cabinet right here. So I knew this is gonna be, I would take my big TV square and I would draw a line and divide these two sections by two. So that's just the remainder of that. And then the same thing I talked about in the video where this is this to two sections and then this section's all by itself. So that's just all that, it's pretty easy. And then to screw it down, I just countersunk some screws right into that particle board base and then the screws I used um, actually were I think an inch and a quarter so it actually goes to the, the plywood itself or the 2x4 structure itself so and on the sketchup I don't I didn't recess the the, the screw head but really it did it, it's flush to the base and then we'll do the vertical structure so there's the cleat system that I was talking to you about really, really briefly is I take my measurements and then if you could pretend, I guess I should have done this on SketchUp, but if you could pretend there's lines, there's lines on my wall ahead of time with a pencil. 
But what I'll do is I'll have an existing height line and my, my width lines and everything drawn out. So when I take my piece of wood, I can just go up to my lines. Then I'll usually throw like a level to make sure I'm, I'm all good and then I can just brad nail things together. So to really simplify this, I end up using these little cleats as my guide. So let's just pretend this piece of wood's not up there yet. What I would do is I would have my markings so I know kind of where I want this as far as height and I know where I want this as far as the width position. I would then take my level, make sure this is square, I'll make some trace lines. And if you first notice, I put a pre-hole. I do three pre-holes inside this piece of uh, wood. And then what I do is because this just happened to be this one little section, missed a stud. Same thing when this, I missed a stud here, which is fine. So I used a nice 65 pound drywall anchor. So by doing a little pre-hole there, I left a little indentation on my wall of those holes. So then I can just come back, put the anchors in the drywall, and then reinstall the board to that. So that really locks this down. So once this is in place, then it's really easy. I could just take this piece of wood, pivot off the base, and then basically just rest it up against my stop I've created, and then I'll take the brad nailer and I'll attack it from this side right here. And this is a really good way for me to, again, do all this by myself without having someone hold this piece of wood up and or make one giant box and install it. And another reason I like doing this is I don't have to waste a back backing wood when I do all my stuff on as far as this built in. I use my wall as the backing. So that saves a lot of material, but I still make this really uh, sound and sturdy. So there's that section. That's kind of where I started with. Then we move on to the next phase. And I guess I really would like to give you a really better demonstration of me using these little cleats because none of this, these are all individual pieces when I install this. Like there's no pre-existing box that I slide in. It's all one piece at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot over to my other SketchUp where I show you my garage and I'll kind of go over the design of these little cabinets. All right, so we are in my virtual two car garage. Basically everything you see here is what I've already kind of got built. So I kind of threw up on this wall to give you a little demonstration, just the theoreticals of how your walls look, assuming you have brick walls, but most, most houses nowadays, this is what it looks like. You have your two by four frame, and then you just have a sheet of drywall over it and most houses have half inch drywall. And then your studs are 16 inches apart. So when you're making cabinets, especially for your garage, I think this method is really, really good because you save a lot of material and the cost, well obviously you have a savings in the cost, but then you could use cheaper material as well. And But you can still dress it up and I'll show you a little bit more about that. But what I use is I use the half inch particle board because that whole sheet is pretty cheap and I can get a lot out of each sheet. And then what I was kind of demonstrating here is when you divide your cuts out, how to make, how to get the most out of your sheet. We have here, um, I think these cabinets I chose were dimensioned off of like a generic kitchen cabinet, but for your garage, you can make this however you want. But the idea is, you want to pick when you're making your cuts on your plywood or your sheets or whatever you're using, you want to do whatever cut's going to be the majority cut, so to speak. So see, I have the 12 inch depth here. That 12 inch depth is the same for the top and bottom as well as all my sides. So it makes sense for me to just cut everything at 12 inches and then I can just come back and decide, okay, is this going to be a top piece? Is this going to be a side piece? And I can just go through the piece of wood that way. And then what I'll end up doing is say I have a little bit of scrap wood. I'll cut those into smaller strips, maybe like two inches wide or inch and a half wide. And I'll use those for all my little structure cleats that that's right here. And then this is kind of obvious, but I'll kind of spell it out. Just pay attention to if you're doing a 12 inch deep shelf, 
you probably need to cut all your stuff to like 11.9 or smaller because you have your width of your wheel each time you're cutting into this. So you're, if you did this exactly at 12, by the time you repeated this to the last board, you're going to be short 12 inches. So just something to think about when you design. I think all mine, I intentionally made them 11.5 just so I could have an additional strip on the side that I could use for all my cleats. But that way I don't have to worry about um, not having the right amount of width. Because sometimes these sheets, they come from the factory. So they could be, you know, their tolerancing could be plus or minus half an inch. They could be 48 plus or 48 minus. So I just chose 11 and a half. But for this demonstration, you kind of get the gist of that. So placement on a wall. On this one, I just figured out, okay, the the door frame, I'm gonna to go to that, and that's gonna be my height line. So you could do like a chalk line, or just take a nice, like three foot, four foot flaming, uh, framing ruler and just hand draw all your lines out. But it's very important to have the lines of the top of the cabinets, and then also draw a line at the base of the cabinet. And I'll explain why. So when you first establish this, you're thinking to yourself, Gage, this might be easier if you just built the box outside and then screw it to the wall. That would make so much more sense and it'd be faster. And I would say, yeah, that's that's totally right. You're, you can, that, that would make a lot of sense. But from my perspective, I'm like, how is that gonna save me money? Or how's this gonna be um, something that I could do really, really quick? I think I could build a cabinet faster on the wall than I can out, because then you're doing the work twice. I'd rather just do it all once. And I'll explain, the, the way this is designed is it's almost like if you were to make a big giant C. I only have a top, a side, and a base. And then when I make the next cabinet to the either right or left, I have the top, a side, and a base. So every cabinet seam shares the same middle. And what I do there is instead of having two cabinets, I'm wasting a piece of wood each time I go over. And over the course of a wall, you know, you could be looking at almost a half a sheet of, of wood. So that's a pretty good saving and each time you're cutting a piece of wood that's time and energy so this is definitely something I love to do now if you're doing kitchen cabinets obviously you need to space you know do your cabinets make it nice and don't go cheap it's just but for me garage cabinets um, built-ins this is this applies really well for built-ins you just use maybe nicer wood maybe doing like three-quarter finished like maple or something um, I would say this is also good stuff for when you're doing laundry rooms or you're doing like your walk-in closets. This is a really good idea. So what's cool with this is you would have everything cut to size on your you know garage floor. You'd have all these pieces cut to size, ready to go. So when you come to build this, you can really throw it together. So let's go ahead and start with, let's pretend we're doing this from scratch. So this is how I would kind of go about it. So you would have two pieces here. You, I would first start with the little cleat, right? So I'm going to take this guy. I'm just move it over here for now. Just line them up to the side. And then what I'm doing here is, say you use three quarter wood, or you're using half inch wood. That's the that's the gap here. In this illustration, I'm using half inch. So you would take basically the bottom cleat that you'd have, you'd grab it off the floor wherever your stash is, and then you'd rotate it to where it was going um, lengthwise, where the half inch part is this thickness. And you would take that wood, and I think that's what I have right here. Let me see if I move it. Yeah, sweet. So pretend this is your, your base cleat that you just you threw up as a guide. So at this point, you'd just be doing this with your hands. So with your line traced out on your wall, you take this cleat, match it to your line and then you would basically tack this in with a brad nail that will hold that up and then you go to the other side line this up tack that with the brad nail and then at that point you could just take this cleat and move it out of your way for now but just brad nails alone is going to be a good enough strength for you to continue building your box and then afterwards you come back and you'll anchor you'll find your studs and you'll like you'll, you'll uh, anchor it in as you see me doing here so but let's just show you how fast and simple this is. So I'll just hide this guy out of my way. You would take this sheet, and since now you have something stuck on the wall, again, you use this as your as your um, pivot point. Like you just rest it up on there like it, as if it was a shelf. 
And then we'll just uh, make this up to there. And from here, you're, the only problem you would have is there's nothing supporting it over the length or the depth of the, the shelf. So you would just take another cleat simply and put it right here. Come out. There you go. Okay. And then you tack this down. And then basically from here, you could walk away. Your shelves held up. And then you keep going with the pattern. You keep building upon one side at a time. And then it, get, it just gets easier and easier and easier. And you get into a routine and a pattern. But I'd say you do the top first. And then you do a side. And then you'd say, how do you hold the side up? And the side would be the same kind of concept. First, you would take your your cleat, come over here, attach it in. Okay, I got this all messed up, but there you go. So while this is tacked in on the wall, you could hold this piece up to this, line it up to the top, and then you have multiple spots to, to throw some nails in. You could throw some nails in coming this way, and then now you have this cleat riding all across the side, so you could just tack the nail and boom, 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 boom. And I think I do a better job showing you here. So let me go ahead and hide this one. But you can see this is where the placement of nails would be. You just tack it in here. Like that. And then for the base, there's a... For the bottom piece, a piece I should say, a really easy thing to do would be if you, knew, if you know... Oh crap, let's go back. Which one is it? All right. If you know how wide you're wanting to travel, you could always just take a piece of wood and just place it on that bottom line. So when you're doing your bottom shelves, you immediately have something to rest up against. So that's something that I would definitely consider. You can see where I have my screws because I did have a piece of wood there when I was first kind of doing my illustration thing. But let's talk about really, really, really quick the power of brad nails. And it's all about the, the strategy and where you place them. You could actually have a cabinet without glue or anything else. If you do it with this, with these supports that I was sh I'm, I'm showing you, with brad nails by themselves, you could put up to 200 pounds in each cabinet. And you could probably even go more. But I could actually grab onto this cabinet and hold onto it and hang down without any other support, without even anchoring it to the stud, just brad nails. And I'm, by the way, I use 18 gauge brad nails. So let me walk with you really quick and then we'll get back to the master bedroom built in. But we'll just hide these for now so you can kind of see. The brad nails that come in, they're like an intersecting grid. And if you ever try to nail anything together, you understand that if you have two pieces of wood and you have one nail going through it, the only way that nail will come out is the direction the nail goes in. So if this nail went in, I can't pull this nail up unless I'm actually ripping it through the wood. So what I do here is I lock it together with this little grid. So I always know I'm having something going lateral and I also have something coming in vertical. So I can't just pull it out like this because this vertical piece stops it from coming out just like this piece is also another support. So you grid lock it in and the only thing really supporting it to the wall would be these ones. So that's kind of why I definitely say come back and find your studs and then throw in your anchor point. It'll be solid, but I'm just generic information here. You could hang off this thing with just brad nails. It's amazing. So the power of brad nails is definitely under, underutilized in a lot of this stuff, but this will allow you to build this entire wall with all your pieces pre-cut, all your little cleats pre-cut. You can come in here and throw this up in a matter of just you know, like half an hour, you could make great cabinets and then you just come in after the fact, add your face frames and doors. So that's the gist of the cabinets. Um, that's kind of the whole style with the built-in where I use the piece of wood to share from the next. And then this is also how I was able to build the whole built-in, which is Brad Nils. And then I came back and added my support pieces. And a lot of my big sheets, I had pocket holes that I also I drove down into it, but that's, it so let's go ahead and move back to the built-in all right cool so back to this i hope that 
wasn't just a lot of rambling, but I hope that makes a little more sense. When you see me adding all these little support pieces, that's what I'm doing is I'm making one piece at a time and I'm resting this against the board. So like this little shelf that came in, I wouldn't have installed that shelf without having some support on the back to first rest it up against and then a support on the front side. And same thing with this, I, I, if you actually watch me, I didn't illustrate this here, but I actually have a piece of wood on the bottom side of this first and then I just simply rest this piece of shelf on it. And then these dividers, I believe I had pocket holes and it actually just came in through the backside and screwed it in to where you couldn't see it because my TV actually sits here so I wanna make sure this is as clean as possible. So that's my centers and the, the only design element was I know my intention was to have space for my Xbox here and then have enough storage for either like the controller or games or DVDs or whatnot. And then the same idea is, okay, this would be way too much space to do one big drawer. So it's obviously divided by two. You have a section here, a section here, and this also creates a really good um, sturdy strength piece to support whatever load I put right here. So that's that section. I kind of describe more of the TV area. So it's the same idea as I already have these two side pieces put in. So this top piece was able just to come right on top, but I do install the, the resting cleat here. So that's this one. Let's keep rocking and rolling. We have the mid cabinets. This is a great illustration just showing you the simplicity. You cut this down. I would add some supports there and just, just fly through it. This one I kind of was showing you the supports. So there's those. The next thing would be the, the shirt cabinets. So same thing, do my cleats, throw up the pieces of wood. And when I, when I do all this stuff too, I batch it out. So I, I know, okay, when I'm on this sector, all these pieces of wood are the same height. Or actually this piece, this piece, and then um, these two pieces are the same height. So what you wanna do is when you're cutting on your table saw, your, your fence and everything set up the exact same way so that you need to really utilize that and not try to do this thing and then come to this thing and this thing and then let's just cross your fingers and hope that when you set your fence up you're exactly the same and if you're a good carpenter obviously you can I'm just saying don't allow yourself for room of air make your process almost foolproof so go ahead and do all these together just like I did all this all at once and then I again these were all cut the same way all right, so pretty easy. Let's move on to the next thing, which is where I did my shelving. So on the side is each section between the cabinets, you see this nice, ugly end grain seam. So that's where I threw in these. All this does is this, it's gonna help illustrate like texture to the side, but it's also gonna hide my seams. That's where I'm using those. So that's the only reason you see that there. And then We'll go to the top shelf. So same idea, cut everything all the same depth and height. And I was able to just zip along through this. And then through my top cover off. If you remember my tray ceiling is really, really close. So I, what I'd done is I left a half inch gap. So that way I could put a little piece of three quarter trim as like the crown mold to hide that gap. But up front here, there's a big gap to the tray. And that's what I was talking about adding the lights up there. And then I'll just drop the cords down through here and then I'll run a power, power switch. So there we go. We'll keep rocking and rolling. Oh, in case you, I had a question for dimensions. So let's, I'll throw you up some dimensions here. So my max length. So that's about, actually, I think I was like 161 inches total width or length. I should describe it as that. And then let's talk about how deep did I make it. Um, let's do, let's just go from here to there. Yeah, so 23 and a half is how deep I made it. The, and that's gonna be the interior depth because I'm butting right against the wall. And then including when I use my three quarter face frame, I'm gonna bring this out to 24 and a quarter. So that's the overall depth, but just without the face frame, that's what, that's what I was looking at. Right, and the reason, it's kind of like what I was talking to you about on my other video in the garage. The reason I just didn't go 24 inches is because when you buy a piece of, you know, four by eight sheet of wood, it's 48 inches wide. 
So I just make it a little bit short to make sure I can ha I could utilize the most of my wood. Because if I did this 24, and I, like I described to you, the width of the wheel would make that next piece shorter than 24 inches. So I just went 24 and a half, and then I just used that little bit of extra strips to do the the cleat stuff. So um, if you want to know my height too, I can go ahead and dimension that out. I do have nine foot ceilings in my house. So actually, let's go all the way to the 2x4 base. I'll pull that out. Okay, so 107 and a half about. That's where I was at for the height. And if you were wondering about my TV, I have a 55 inch in, uh, TV. So this box, I think I told you I went a little bit bigger, but that's 58 and a half. And then the height I did 40 inches. So there you go. So next, next little illustration. I'm just highlighting all the interior structure pieces. And then the other importance to continuing your structure to the front is when you attach your face frame, now you have more meat to bite into. And then I actually do that on these shelves as well, but that's that. Let's keep rolling. So then I box in this shelf. I didn't want it to look so bare and open, so I do add a little sidewall. And then later on, I'll add some trim detail just to kind of dress it up a little bit. And then I know, I know I have a TV that's blocking all this, but in the past, I was just thinking to myself, it's more about the craftsmanship that I wanted to really appreciate. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a TV wall mount where the TV can pull away from the wall or just, I just wanted to make sure that wherever I change my, in my future plans that this just looks classy. So I put that there. And I know too, the same concept with this, you're gonna have shirts hanging and hiding this, but I just thought it's that classy detail. This is my little built-in. Um, I wanted that kind of character to it. So that's kind of where I came up with this. Um, and then on my outside doors, like when I'm all said and done, when I do my last video, when I'm making my doors, I'm gonna carry this little shape out only on these three doors. So this door, this door, and then this door will have this characteristic as well. So then we'll do our is our, our style. So we're now we're getting into the finishing trim. So I do all my vertical strips first, and that's just my style. I like the vertical ones going all the way through. Now, since I'm doing a baseboard, you don't need to go all the way to the floor, but if you want to, then you know more power to you, but I just stop there. So that's the vertical strips. Pretty easy. I just use, there's a lot of good material. My favorite is popular, but for for cost, if you're painting it, I find that the pure like white pine, you know, no knots, the nice three quarter white pine does the trick. And then the stuff I use is the three and a half inch wide. So let me just throw this up. You know what? I put this as three and a quarter, uh, three quarters, but it's three and a half inch. Ignore that. Three and a half and it's three quarters inch thick. So then we'll do the, the rails. So it's the same idea, except now we're coming on the horizontal stuff, and now you're just filling your gaps. And same thing when I'm talking about batch. You just gotta be very, very careful. When you're putting your vertical strips up, you wanna make sure that you use the bubble or like a, a framing ruler, make sure you're perfectly square all the way through. But if, you're, if you cut all these to the same width, you're, you're being kind of brave because perfect world scenario, there's gonna be a little bit of tolerancy and gap. So if I could exaggerate a taper, say this side might be maybe 1 16th wider than this one, depending on how you put your, your supports here up. So I might actually just do these one at a time. And what I did in my garage is I put my miter saw really close to my garage door so I could just come in and out really fast. So I think on these ones, I just did one cut per each one to make sure I had a really, really snug fit that I didn't want any gaps shown when I was all said and done and finished. And on these, I guess I didn't really do a good job illustrating, but on these ones, what I'll do is I'll brown nail them in place with glue behind it. And that's really strong. And I left a lot of meat for those nails to get into. And then the glue makes it really, really rigid. And on the vertical stuff or the horizontal stuff, you can come back with maybe one pocket screw on the backside. So still nail it in and then throw in a pocket screw there. And that thing will be really rigid. And that's basically what I did with all this stuff. And then we'll go into adding the baseboard as the very final detail 
And on this one, I just had a couple weird angles that I decided to kind of do a more rounded texture detail on it. But yeah, baseboard, you can go with whatever style you want, but you already can tell it's big piece. It's a very big piece, but when you do one section at a time, you always start with the base and then you build up to the cabinets and then you just kind of go through it one little section at a time. And like I said, when you do it by yourself and you just do one little sheet, it's not daunting. It's, you know, you just have to have your stuff pre-planned out, draw on your wall, map it out. You don't have to have fancy SketchUp to get this done. You could, I did all this actually pen and paper. I have probably stacks of hands, you know, chicken scratch lines, dimensions, and all this other stuff on paper first. And I made sure it made sense. And then I kind of did this after the fact just for illustration purposes. But that's the little tutorial. I hope that I didn't make this too long and boring, but I hope you kind of can see the little bit of strategies I used. Um, just uh, stay tuned with me. I'll go ahead and I'm going to end this video here. Actually, I'm going to end this video like this. Bam. So thank you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and I've been in the process making the cabinets. I've been in the process with doing my drawer boxes. So I'm really just stoked for it. It's going to look freaking sweet. But I appreciate everyone that's been watching me and looking forward to the finished product. I'll uh, see you guys soon.